Hi, in this video I want to talk about my experience with the Sydney race um, on the Northern Beaches. So let's dive in. As many of you know, the race was m a massive turnout, which was so good and uh, saw lots of people that I've become friends with over the last few years that I've been foiling. Lots of people that sort of know me online. It was great to meet everyone in person. I really, really enjoyed that. That was sort of why I went. I wasn't going to try and win because I knew I wasn't going to. But I just want to say massive shout out to all the people that um, went, made the effort, especially those who traveled. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time. Now, the actual race wasn't such a great time. Uh, the forecast was supposed to be 20 knots, 25 knots, and I got something in my eye. My biggest concern leading into this race, and the thing we talked about pre-race, was do I go a really small foil to go try and go really fast, or do I go a sort of a medium-sized foil to enjoy the race? And uh, I was gonna go the 1121 in the 20 knots, and I ended up, uh, I didn't even bring down my 1201, my 1401, my 1180 Spitfire. I didn't even consider bringing any of those foils down from the Sunshine Coast. And so as we drove up to the race start, it became very apparent that there was bugger all wind. You've all heard the stories. It was probably eight to 10 knots and the, there was some leftover bumps and there was sort of like little swells. So some things were traveling fairly fast and the bumps that were left over were traveling really slow. So you sort of needed to be either able to pump a really fast foil uh, or jump on the slowest thing you can to preserve your energy. So uh, I'll show you my watch data. James Casey took off next to me and he got up within 10 seconds, 15 seconds. He pretty much just started paddling and he was on a bump. And I was like, purposely, I stayed sitting down until he got up because I didn't want the pressure and I didn't want to get in his way either. Zane then took off on my other side and so I sort of had a clean runway. So that was probably 20, 30 seconds I waited. And I got up, uh, I think third go, because I kept trying to go left and I needed to go right because... So I got up and you'll see my heart rate uh, in the first sort of 10 minutes. I was just pumping nonstop. Couldn't quite find my rhythm, couldn't get up to speed properly, couldn't keep up with certain bumps. I was too fast for slower bumps. It was just light. and. I felt underfoiled for my fitness level, and that's a really important point. I was on the 1121 with the 360 by 45 skinny. So not a particularly huge setup when it's so light. And uh, yeah, I just pumped myself out within the first 10 minutes, like my legs were dead. And I remember coming off uh, sort of just after the first headland, and I fell into the water, and the water's a lot cooler down there than up here, and I just remember being in sweet relief because I was just sweating, hot, and I fell into the water and just felt so good. And I think I stayed there for probably two, three minutes. I just needed to find energy again. And it became really apparent to me that at that point, it wasn't about trying to race, it was about literally just trying to finish. As I looked down and I saw, I think three headlands in between where I was and where I needed to go, I had about eight Ks to go and how light it was and how hard that first 2Ks was, I just, <laughs> I really was like, oh shit, this is not fun. I, yeah, you will see from the way I did the race is I took big rests and I just realized like, there's no point trying to be a hero. I just don't wanna come last and I wanna finish. So I got up, I came down and sort of every two Ks, got up, came down because I was just so tired. I did think to myself along the way, I did start to notice that I just wasn't sitting high enough on the mast and I wasn't paddle pumping in that first two kilometers. I tried to downwind the way I normally do. And once I really just went, okay, stay high and paddle pump, uh, I got a little more rhythm but I kept getting hit by all those backwashes and they they come straight at you. Whereas ours normally, if we get backwashes sort of, well, they come from this way. Um, we get sort of side shore and I sort of know how to handle that. But the ones that are straight at you, I didn't really know what to do. And I always just ended up 
feeling like they just took so much speed out of me. So I'd get a set of backwash and I just, I didn't have the experience. I didn't know the run. And uh, I pretty much came off at every headland because <laughs> I kept getting hit by the backwash, losing speed, already so tired. And then, then I'd fall in the water, cool off, have a rest and get going again. When I saw the jet ski starting to pick people up and tow them up, as particularly I saw Jeremy get a tow up and I went, oh man, geez, I want to tow up so bad. Because not only were they getting towed up, they were getting pulled out to sea and it's giving them a better line to go with the bumps. Whereas I was still trying to cut and just cut and cut and cut. And it was funny, in the last three, four kilometers, I found a little bit of a groove and, but just still so tired, like just running at what felt for me full capacity. And yeah, finished the race. I think it took me just over conservatively. I think it just took me over an hour. I think I started my watch a little bit too late, as I tend to do. Uh, I had a very spectacular finish, which was quite funny. I went to like, I don't know. I don't even know what happened. I was just tired. And really nice welcoming on the beach. Like everybody was so encouraging. The fact that you finished, because I think we all realized that it was just a slog. So big shout out to James, Oscar and Alex Tibby. First, second, third. The speeds that James and Oscar did, especially James, it's just insane in those sort of conditions. Like we did a run a couple of days after in 20 knots and we did similar speeds to what James was doing in that race. Just proves how well he knows his gear. They've made great foils. He knows that run, obviously it's his home advantage, but that doesn't take away from the impressive performance that it was. So that was really, really cool to see. And to know that I did the exact same run in the same conditions and where am I at? It's, it was the best thing about the race was being able to measure myself against other riders for, the, for fitness level. Now, the, the, the other interest, the only thing I wish was that somebody of the same weight as me was on the 1121 Art Pro as well. Uh, I thought Dave Kassane was about my weight, but he's not. He's about 80 kilos. And, you know, 15 kilos is no small amount. And so I did a run the other day in similar conditions, averaging three minute kilometers. And that was nine, nine kilometers I did, yeah, averaging three minute kilometers. So that would have gotten me home on that race at about the 35, 37 minute mark. And it's super interesting. This is one of my key takeaways. That if you ever go to a race, just take all your foils. That's the first lesson. Because I have no doubt in my mind that for my fitness level, if I had taken the 1201 even, the 1401 or the 1180 Spitfire, I actually would have had a pretty good race. I would have been top 10, potentially sort of like seventh or eighth. And that would have been awesome because I probably would have aced the run. I would have paddled up super duper easy and I would have had enough in my legs to just keep pumping with the little gliding that you got to do. So that was the first thing is always, anytime I'm gonna go to a race now, I'm gonna assume the worst of the conditions and bump up a foil size. That's just for me. And I'm trying to work on my fitness to be able to not have to do that. Uh, But that's probably always going to be a bit of reality for me. The the second super impressive thing, and this has really changed my perspective, is Alex Tibby, who's 95 kilos. He was riding the 930 Armstrong downwind, downwind wing. Not the Axis 930. That doesn't exist. Um... The dude's 95 kilos, like proper nine. He's 97 kilos, I think. And that's a relatively small area foil. It's got a wide wingspan, but it's probably somewhere between the 1121. Like he tends to go as fast as I do on the 1121, maybe even faster. 
So I'm going to say that foil actually lands somewhere between the 1051 Art Pro and the 112 Art Pro, which is why to me it was so impressive that he managed to come third on what is, for our weight, a really small foil. So that was a really big takeaway. The thing about him is he is extremely fit. He's got a long history of being fit. And I took away from that that I really need to work on my fitness, my engine, my cardiovascular output, because that's really what tripped me up. If I had more in the tank, I probably could have kept pumping. Uh, and if I'd been more conscious early on about mast height and paddling, I probably could have kept, kept going. But the main thing I took away from this entire race was I need to get my fitness up to par. Um, so I, as I'm heading into, say, the Hawaii races, that's the main thing I'm going to focus on is my fitness. It was really humbling. Like, I never went into it with an ego. Uh, I knew that I was going to be... I was. I, I sort of expected to be middle of the pack, and I think I came, like, 20th, if you count out the foil drivers. Sorry, I love foil drive. I'm a foil drive team rider. But they shouldn't have been on the, the, the finishing list, cause, and neither should have the people that got jet ski paddle-ups. <laughs> Jeremy Walmart. But anyway... Um, so I was like, yeah, 20 something, 21st, 20th, if you take out those people. And uh, out of 40 ish. So that was, I was just glad to finish. I honestly, it was a brutal hour. But I did a run like that at home literally last week. And I was on the right size foil for the day and I enjoyed it. So if I had just used a bigger foil, I would have had a great race. Having used a smaller foil, the big difference was fitness and uh, knowing your, your gear, making the right decisions, but fitness was a huge factor. And the guys that have that really proper, you know, marathon type fitness did really well and good on them. They're really impressive. Um, so yeah, that sort of was my main takeaway from the race. Massive shout out to Josh uh, and Lisa and Simon. In particular, Lisa, so much of what she did was behind the scenes and quite complex. And Josh, what an effort to put this event together for Foilers and I really enjoyed it. Don't know if I'll travel down for the next one because it cost me like 800 bucks. <laughs> so $800 for a eight to 10 knot down window. Isn't a great exchange. <laughs> But the experience was awesome and I learned so much. It, it was honestly one of the most gratifying learning experiences I've had in a long time. And I don't, I don't really have the race bug personally. I just enjoy being with the guys and um, that camaraderie. That was great. And, and people are very kind in the downwind world because they know how hard it is so when we all finished and other people were finishing you know we were clapping and cheering as they came into the beach and um yeah so that's how the race went that's what i learned from the race once again thanks to to lisa and josh in particular and anybody else who contributed uh, jb and well done again to the winners james oscar tibby well done guys incredible and I have nothing else to say so that's it peace